We've already given some examples of guided or wired media, coaxial cable, twisted pair, optical fiber. We want to talk about wireless media. In fact, we've already mentioned examples of wireless media. You know some, like Wi-Fi, uh, TV broadcasts, satellite communications. So there are many examples I think you know, your mobile phone. But to, to really understand them, we need to look at some of the theory or concepts of wireless transmission. And especially we'll look at antennas. And the other aspect is how much signal do we lose when we transmit wirelessly. Many different examples of wireless communication systems, receiving TV either via satellite or via, uh, via the, the normal antennas on your TV, Wi-Fi, mobile phones, infrared home communications, many examples that I think you're aware of. A simple model of wireless transmissions is that we have a transmitter, it generates an electrical signal, and then we have an antenna. The antenna takes that electrical current and converts it to an electromagnetic wave, some wave that will propagate through space at a particular range of frequencies, usually the radio and microwave range of frequencies. That signal propagates through the air or through some other, sometimes uh, maybe through water if necessary, like underwater communications. The signal propagates through air and is received by another antenna. And that receive antenna does the opposite to the transmit antenna. It receives an electromagnetic wave, converts it back to electricity. And that electrical current received is the signal received, and that carries our data. We need to understand what's the role of the antennas in this. What do they do? What are their characteristics? We introduce that today. The other thing we need to understand is when we transmit a signal, we'd like to know how far we can send it wirelessly. Often we'd like to have set up the two uh, points and I'd like to know, well, how far apart can I put them such that they can still communicate? And one thing that that depends upon is how much signal is lost when we transmit through the air. So we'll spend some time on that as well. A more mathematical view of those components, we start with some signal with some power level, PT, the transmit power. We will see that the antenna effectively acts like an amplifier. So we'll try and explain that concept such that it has some gain. When we try to analyze how far we can transmit, we treat the antenna like an amp amplifier and it has some gain. So we transmit a signal, it goes into the antenna, what comes out will be bigger, have a higher power. As that signal propagates through the air, it loses power, it gets weaker due to attenuation. Any signal that travels some distance gets weaker. By how much? We will denote as L. The loss, sometimes we'll call that the path loss. From the path to transmitter to receiver, how much do we lose? We receive a signal and the receive antenna acts as an amplifier and we have some gain. And the resulting receive power is the combination of we start with PT, we amplify by GT, we divide by the loss, we multiply by the gain of the receiver and we get the receive power. In the same way as our audio system, we started with a transmit power. For the components that introduced a loss, we divided. For the components that introduced a gain, we multiplied. And we ended up with the receive power. Or here we simplify. We start with the transmit power. The antenna, we can think, introduces a gain. The signal loses strength across distance, so we have a loss. And then the receive antenna has a gain. And we get the receive power. We will do some calculations and see uh, under what conditions can we successfully receive in this topic. So we need to know what's the role of the antenna? What does it do in this? 
where does GT and GR come from, the antenna gain, what does that mean? And we'll do that today, we'll try and introduce that. The other thing we'll do in the, in the next lecture is look at how does signal propagate through different obstacles. We'll come back to does the signal go through a wall or not, under what frequencies and why. And maybe the last thing will be to say, well, by how much do we lose power when the signal attenuates? If I transmit my signal from here to Rungsit, the other campus, about uh, 12 kilometres, 15 kilometres, will my signal be received at the receiver with enough strength for the receiver to understand? How much power do I lose across that 12 or 15 kilometres? I would like to know that. So today let's focus on antennas. Can anyone see an antenna? Maybe look at your mobile phone, your tablet or laptop. Can you see your antenna? They all have wireless transmitters. They all have antennas. Get your phone out. Another chance to use your phone. Find your antenna. Maybe a tablet. If you had one of the old phones, quite old now, you could pull up an antenna, okay, extend out. But now they embed it in the back of the device usually. Usually the antennas in laptops, phones, are, think of some cables or some wiring which is sort of wrapped around, usually in the back of the device. But there is an antenna in there. We cannot see it. Same in the laptop, usually the antenna is some wiring in the back of the screen. And that acts as our transmit and receive antenna. Our wireless access point in the back of the room. Can you see the antennas? Two of those stick antennas. Dipole antennas they're called. So a different shape usually. What other types of antennas do we see? I just grabbed some from Wikipedia. The dish shaped antennas you've seen. Maybe if you have satellite TV reception, you have a, a small dish about 50 centimetre diameter and that receives a signal from a satellite up in space, a parabolic dish. Or these ones are for, I think, receiving signals from space for, for detecting space signals or sending, I think, receiving in this case, to learn about the uh, space. So large dishes. So many antennas will have this parabolic dish shape, so we'll talk about them as we go through. But there are many different shapes and sizes of antennas. For TV reception, sometimes we have these UHF and VHF antennas. So you, you may have seen the shapes there. The design of the antenna uh, is, is done to handle the particular frequencies they want to transmit and receive, and the impacts upon the gain that they have, so how far that they can transmit and receive. And your mobile phone, although you cannot see the antenna of your phone, you can probably see the base stations or cell phone towers around. And if you look at the top of those towers, you'll see some antennas. And they may look like this. They, so in this picture it's hard to see, but these rectangles here are antennas. They're sector type antennas in that they're designed such that the signal goes out in a particular sector. So you can see they are multiple antennas around, some pointing in this area, some pointing there and around there. So we split the area up into multiple sectors and those antennas pick up your mobile phone signal and send back to your mobile phone. Many types of antennas. What do they do? They take at the transmitter an electrical current as input and generate electromagnetic waves that go through air and at the receiver do the opposite, convert it back to electricity. The waves which are transmitted are usually in the radio and microwave range of frequencies. About 3 kilohertz up to about 300 gigahertz. When we analyse antennas, the transmit and receive antenna, we look at the characteristics of those antennas, we treat them the same. We'll see that they have the same specs usually. Usually the antenna 
whether it's transmit or receive doesn't matter. They are effectively the same. So we have electricity coming into the antenna and the signal comes out. In what direction does the signal come out? And how far does it go depends upon the shape of that antenna, the design of the antenna. So the examples we saw, the, the parabolic dish, those UHF and T VHF TV antennas or the sector antennas, they are designed in different ways to impact upon what direction the signal will propagate and how far it will propagate. So we need to understand a little bit about that. So let's consider some different types of antennas and consider how the, the signal propagates out of them. The first one is what we call an isotropic antenna. And it's very simple. Let's say this is our isotropic antenna. When we transmit a signal through this isotropic antenna, the signal comes out of it and in every direction the signal propagates with equal power, equal strength. That is, going up, going forward, back, down, every direction around this transmitting or this antenna, the signal is spreading with equal strength. That means if you measure the signal one meter away from that antenna, if you measure one meter in front, and let's say you measure the signal strength to be one watt, you measure one meter behind, it will also be one watt. You measure one meter to the left, one meter above, at the same distance from that transmitting antenna, the power will be the same at all those points. This is what we define as an isotropic antenna. So if you try and draw those measurements of power strength, say some distance away, you can think of it as a sphere, a ball. One meter above this, the power is, let's say, one watt. One meter to the left, to the, the behind, and every point one meter away, which makes up a sphere, has the same power level. Two meters away, a sphere centered on the transmit antenna, it'll be the same power level. Not necessarily one watt, but the same as two meters away from every point. The signal goes in all directions equally. We use an isotropic antenna to compare real antennas. No antennas that we use are actually isotropic. They may be close, but in, in practice they're uh, not quite isotropic. And we usually design antennas such that they will concentrate the energy in one particular direction. So we talk about direct directional antennas. Instead of sending equally in all directions, I would like the power to go in that direction. So the antenna will be designed to do that. So let's try and illustrate the difference between isotropic and directional antennas and then introduce antenna gain. I cannot draw in 3D very well. Okay, so we're going to go through an example in two dimensions. It's easier to draw, but you could expand in your mind to be 3D. Let's first consider an isotropic antenna and put some numbers or values to it. The black dot in the middle, that's the location of our isotropic antenna. When it transmits a signal, that signal goes in all directions with equal strength. So, if I was one meter away at this point, and I have a device to measure the receive power, we transmit with power, PT, and I measure one meter away, and I measure the received power to be PR, some value. And let's denote it as PR. By definition of an isotropic antenna, if I measure at a different point, also one meter away, the power will also be PR. So at this point, one meter away, the received power will be the same as this point. And the same as all of those points on the circle, the received power will be PR. 
So that's what this circle is showing. At points equal distance away from the transmitter, from the antenna, the power will be the same, and I just denote as PR. Wake up for this easy question. Is PR greater than, equal to, or less than PT? Greater than, hands up. So is PR greater than PT? Is PR equal to PT? Is PR less than PT? It's less than. We transmit with power PT. Attenuation says that as that signal propagates across some distance, it will get weaker. Okay, just considering attenuation, we start with PT. As it covers that one meter, it will get weaker. So PR will be less than PT. I don't know what the value is, but we just know that it will be less. If I measured two meters away and I measured the power to be PA, for example, that will be less than PR. And three meters away will be even lower and lower. The power gets less and less the further we go away from the transmitter. Half a meter away, the power will be greater than PR, but less than PT, somewhere in between. So here's our isotropic antenna. At some point equidistant from the transmitter, the power will be the same. But in practice, we have directional antennas. So let's try and explain how they differ. So the black circle still shows the power received from the isotropic antenna. <clears throat> but let's assume we have a different antenna, a directional antenna, the blue one, and it's located at the same point as the isotropic antenna. We have two antennas at the exact same location, the black one and the blue one. And what we do is we measure the received signal at different points. So when we're using the blue directional antenna, it transmits some signal. And this blue shape, which I've drawn, it may not be perfectly to scale, but the blue shape tries to illustrate that if I measure the signal at any point on that blue shape, I measure it to be PR. Exactly the same as any point on the black circle. That is, at this point, with an isotropic antenna, I measure the received signal and it's PR. And every point on that circle, it becomes PR. Now, with our different antenna, the directional antenna, I measure it here which is, of course, further away from the transmitter than the circle. And the received power is also PR. And I measure it here. Maybe this is two point something meters away from the transmitter. The received power is PR. Here, maybe 1.3 meters away from the transmitter, the received power is also PR. At this point, maybe half a meter away from the transmitter, the received power is PR. That's what the blue shape shows. At all points, the received power is the same. Given that, let's consider you're at the red dot. If we're using the isotropic antenna and you measure the signal strength at that red dot, what is the signal strength? What's the received power at the red dot? Yeah. Uh, what? What? So, use the black isotropic antenna. We transmit with PT. We measure the signal here at the red dot, and the value is PR. By definition, every point on the circle, the value is PR. Now, we use the blue isotropic antenna to transmit. And at that same red point, I measure the power from the blue isotropic antenna. I measure it to be PX. Now the question is, compare PX 
to PR? Is PX greater than PR, equal to PR, or less than PR? Hands up for greater than. Hands up for equal to. Less than. Some people tried to put their hands up. That's all right. Let's consider the blue one. We transmit with PT. At this point, I don't know, two and a half meters away, the signal strength is PR. So this red point, which is between the transmitter and the value that we measure as PR, the signal strength must be less than PT, but it should be greater than PR. We know the signal gets weaker across distance. So if it's PR here, at a closer point, it should be greater than PR. And let's say we measure it and denote it as PX. So what we're saying now is that in this particular direction, if we use our black isotropic antenna at this red point, the signal strength is PR. If we use our blue directional antenna at the same point, the signal strength is PX, and PX is larger than PR. So we can say that this blue antenna has some gain relative to our isotropic antenna. The gain of the blue antenna in this direction is by how much larger PX is than PR. And of course, we could also express that gain in a logarithmic scale. Take the logarithm times by 10. Let's consider and see if people understand. Consider in the opposite direction. You stand at this point here. Okay, one meter away from the antennas. And you measure the signal strength to be PY. This point is PY for the blue antenna. For the black one, it's PR. For the blue one, it's PY. Is PY greater than PR, less than, or equal to? That is behind the antenna in the opposite direction here. Well, we know we transmit with PT. We said this point with the blue antenna would be PR. Therefore, if we measure further away, it's going to be less than PR. That is, this PY, if we measure here, will be less than PR. So in effect, the received power is less than what we would get if we use the isotropic antenna. We also have a gain, but it's going to be uh, smaller than one or a loss, in fact. So we we'll use this, this concept to determine the characteristics of an antenna. Usually we focus on the direction where it's strongest. In our blue one, the direction where our signal is strongest is this direction. And we can say the gain of my blue antenna can be calculated as if I measure the point, if I measure the power at the red dot, I measure it to be PX. The gain is PX divided by PR, where PR would be the power if I used an isotropic antenna. And that's a key characteristic of antennas in practice. When you go buy one, you're trying to compare two antennas. Usually in the spec, it will say the gain of the antenna. And a larger gain generally means you can transmit further. We'll see that come up when we look at the path loss. So the gain of the antenna is actually measured relative to an isotropic antenna, relative to this perfect all directions antenna. We can take the logarithm of this gain, of this Px divided by Pr and times by 10 to express it in dB. And we don't just write dB, we'll see, we'll talk about antenna gain as decibels relative to an isotropic antenna. The reference point is not one watt, one milliwatt. The reference point is what we would get if we used an isotropic, I for isotropic antenna. 
let's see if we can put some numbers to that uh, to, to finish this introduction to antenna gain. Let's bring up the picture. Where? This one. Let's instead of talking about PR and PT, let's just make up some numbers to put with those values so it may be a little bit easier to, to understand. And the numbers that I'll write, I'll just make them up. They may not be to scale, but let's say we transmit with a power level PT of, uh, let's say, uh, 100 milliwatts. So the transmit power is 100 milliwatts. And one meter away with our isotropic antenna, we measure at the black points on that circle PR to be 10 milliwatts. Okay, so at every black point when we're using an isotropic antenna, we measure it to be 10 milliwatts, one meter away. And by definition, with our blue directional antenna, PR at every point on the blue shape is also 10 milliwatts. That is the same value. It's PR. <coughs> Let's say when I'm using my blue directional antenna, I measure the signal strength at this red point. It's one meter away. Here the power transmitted is 100 milliwatts. Here it's 10 milliwatts, so at the red point it's going to be between 100 and 10. It's going to be less than 100, larger than 10. What value? Well, let's make up a value. Uh, let's say it's 70 milliwatts. What's the gain of our blue antenna in this direction? Well, Px is 70 milliwatts. Pr, the reference point, when we used an isotropic antenna at that same point, would be 10 milliwatts. So the gain is 7. Or we use our calculator and convert it to dB. Ten times log of seven. Eight point four five. And here's the, the notation we use, which is equivalent to eight point four five dB relative to an isotropic antenna. So we write dBi, lowercase i there. That's our reference point. My blue directional antenna in that particular direction has a gain of 8.45 dBi. Seven times larger than if we use the perfect isotropic antenna. Let's try a different point. We measure at some other point. We measure here. With our blue antenna, well, no, with our black isotropic antenna, if we measure here, we get PR of 10 milliwatts. Every point on the black circle, 10 milliwatts. If I use my blue directional antenna, the power at PY is going to be less than 100 milliwatts and in fact also less than 10 milliwatts because it's 10 milli milliwatts here further away is going to be less than let's make up a number and say it's 2 milliwatts 
This is 100. This point is 10. Let's say this point is 2. Then the gain in this direction we can calculate. The gain at point Y is our 2 milliwatts divided by 10 milliwatts, which is what we would have got with an isotropic antenna, 0 0.2, or with our calculator, 10 times log of 0 0.2 minus about 7 dBi. It's in fact a loss. Our signal strength is less than what we would have got if we used an isotropic antenna. So less than 1, 0 0.2 means it's really a loss, a factor of 5. Or minus 7 dBi means it's a loss of 7 dBi. So a directional antenna may be strong in one direction, but weak in other directions. Why? Because the energy is conserved. It's the same as that comes out of our original antenna, but it's concentrated in one direction. Usually when we look at the spec of an antenna, it talks about the, the gain in the strongest direction. But to be more precise, you will see some plots or pictures that try to draw the gain in different directions. In our case, we've only done it in two dimensions, but we'd also need to consider it in the third dimension as well. So, isotropic antennas are theoretical antennas that we compare our real antennas against, and we can arrive at an antenna gain. The gain of using this real antenna compared to is if we use the theoretical isotropic antenna. And we'll use that when we compare and do analysis of how far we can transmit.